And these doctrines, he plainly tells you what they are. They're doctrines of baptisms. They're doctrines and commandments of the law. They're things that have been emphasized now for over 1,500 years through Moses' law. But Paul is saying, since Christ, we have to leave them. We have to go on into perfection, not laying again them foundations of dead works. Amen. But that's all our world, church world, wants to exalt and dip and dabble around in is dead works. They want to be uh, under works and deeds of the law so they can measure their righteousness. Uh, we can't do anything as for as to save ourselves as works. Works is not sufficient. Paul is the only apostle that gives us this type of information where water baptism is not sufficient, where taking communion is not sufficient. Any hypocrite can walk up and take communion. Any hypocrite can be baptized. Any hypocrite can pay tithes and make shows in the flesh and look to be a distinguished Christian according to your all's measurements. Amen. According to the things that you all require. Uh, people brag and boast in their carnal works. But I'm telling you, it is going to be insufficient in the day of God's judgment. It wasn't required by us Gentiles ever. We have never, ever been under the law. Amen. Why would Christ die on the cross to fulfill the law because the Jews, he wanted to deliver them and give them a free gift but why would he die on the cross to impose the dead works of the law, which had not worked for 1,500 years previously? Why would he die on the cross and then try to establish us Gentiles in a covenant that the Jews could not keep, that failed? It didn't make them perfect because of the flesh, because of the weakness of their flesh. We are mixed up and confused by our leaders who have gone to uh, seminaries and things and learned the depths of how to control people and how to captivate people and how to, uh, uh, in their religion that they have chose, they have learned how to minister unto those types and sects of people. That's not what it's about, friend. Jesus has one church, many members, but we are all called by the same name. We all have adopted and been adopted into a single name. Amen. And that name is Jesus, whereby we can cry Abba, which means Father. Jesus, Father, Jesus, Savior, Jesus, Redeemer. We have been given such a much greater, um, a more powerful plan of grace through faith. And it was so much better than works and deeds of the law. The works and deeds of the law are measured in the carnality. If you don't think so, go back and read Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1 is a very complete message from Isaiah to Israel about how that they have put so much confidence in the sacrifices that they kill, in the times and the days and the seasons that they observe throughout the calendar year, and the Sabbaths and all of these, and how they have put so much emphasis riding up on this and the weightiness and the powerfulness of that law that they are so uh, uh, urgently keeping in their life. They're so uh, much about it that they're cumbered about it and then they're 
try to do them precisely. But the Lord tells Isaiah, he said, Who has required this abundance of these sacrifices? Who has required these things at your hand that you should do them? He said, I want to do away with these things. And he said, you, speaking to the prophet Isaiah through him to Israel, you have uh, held on to them and you would not let me do away with them. Amen. You would not let me abolish them. He said, I wanted to away with them and you would not. Why? Because they're getting so much glory in the flesh to do these things in observance throughout the calendar year of observing of the days and the times and the seasons through the observing of seven feast days and holy days throughout the calendar year through the observance of every seventh day Sabbath through the observance of what the priest would require in sacrifice the greater the sacrifice that meant the more weightier the sin and the more abundantly uh, powerful and rich the believer, the person doing those things. Uh, if you had a turtle dove to kill, it meant you was a little bit on the poor class of Israel. If you had a 2,000 pound bullock to kill, it meant that you had a great sin and that you were very wealthy and that that wealth of killing that 2,000 pound bullock compared to a turtle dove that would weigh probably less than a pound. But you see, these were all set up by Moses, sacrifices, offerings. Uh, all kinds of offerings, all kinds of holy days and feast days and Sabbath to keep the people into a place of recognizing and paying homage or tribute to God. Yeah. Till the time. Till the time of what? What Paul says? Reformation. Till the time of reformation. Till the time that God would make that second covenant. Not the first covenant that was only given to Israel and it was only given to the works and the deeds of the flesh. But the second covenant, what he told Paul and what Paul wrote was, I will be in them and I will talk in them and walk in them in them. They shall be my pe people and I will be their God. Amen. Different. It's a different covenant. It's a different dispensation. It's a different type of sacrifice. The sacrifices of animals and the sacrifices of material things and all of the participation of the things of the flesh did not make what Paul said the comer that person that was guilty and doing those things uh, for a type of punishment or restitution, that it did not make them perfect. Why? Because the law had little things that, and discrepancies that the people could not do. They were never going to be perfect by the law. Jesus was the only perfect human being, only perfect man to ever walk on the face of this earth. He completed, he finished, he fulfilled, he abolished it. He took it out of the way. He ended the first covenant, the first covenant of all of its holy days and feast days and Sabbath, all of its sacrifices and ordinances and doctrines that required the person, the comer, the one that was guilty to do, it was finished. Amen. Christ would nail all of that to his cross. He finished it himself and therefore he had the power to take it out of the way Paul said that those now are spoiled principalities. 
they are spoiled because now, 2,000 years after the cross, they are out of date. Just like you buy food in your refrigerator that's out of date. Your milk goes out of date. Your meats, your things, everything you buy in your cupboards and cabinets and all of that. You have to be watchful. It'll be out of date. Uh, that is what Paul is telling us that Christ did with the law. Amen. He made it out of date. When he completed it, when he finished it, he nailed it to the cross and it was obsolete. That's the word we would use today. It has no meaning to us Gentiles. It has nothing in requiring us to do as far as a Sabbath day. Thank you, Jesus. As far as paying tithes, as far as observing the Feast of Dedication, which you do for Christmas, where you put up trees and ornaments and uh, put up statues and have these man-made things in your lap of Santa Clauses and flying reindeers and uh, frosty snowmans and elves at the North Pole. Friend, we as Gentiles are now guilty and we're guilty of observing days and times and seasons and idols and graven images and things of this nature that was never ever required. It was never demanded from God to us. It was never imposed on us that we would keep these things and do them or we would die. No. Paul said, listen, Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, contrary to us, nailed them to his cross, taking them out of the way. His blood is what blotted them out, friend. His blood is what poured upon those ordinances and commandments and doctrines of Moses' law. His blood is what took away the Sabbaths and the paying of tithes and the observance of holy days and feast days. His blood is what uh, is going to wash every believer now. It's going to wash their mind. It's going to purify and sanctify their heart. Not the heart pumping blood itself, but their mind. God is about purifying your mind and making you understand what He came to do. And what was it? To finish the law. Amen. To fulfill the law. To take away all of that condemnation that where any person is required and judged by the law will be doomed to die and be put in hell. You understand that? There's not one person that could stand the test of living under the law. You will all be guilty. If the law is imputed to me today... Listen, friend, I'm going to die before the sun goes down because I'm guilty. Oh, I'm not guilty of some of it. No. And neither is everybody else guilty of all of it in, a, uh, in the completeness of 1600, uh, 613 laws. No. We're not imputed that and we're not responsible for because we can't even keep ten laws. We are so weak and we are so vulnerable. We are so misled and we, uh, by tradition, have had laws and lies engraved into our mind and we think these are right. We think that we have to do these laws and traditions. And friend, the Lord is not requiring them. I don't know what power you think your church has to use a authority over all of its members to do those things. I don't understand why they think they're more powerful than Jesus. I don't know why they think they're 
as pure and perfect as Jesus was, I don't know why you think those things. Because of tradition. Because the law of Moses has been imputed into our mind. It's almost engrafted. Uh, and people are so zealous to do through tradition the things that they learned from their mothers and fathers and from their um, grandparents and uh, even their friends and neighbors. They're so zealous to do them things, but not knowing the things that they're doing is against what grace stands for. Amen. When you desire to do works of the law, you are denying grace, and you are absolutely uh, telling Jesus, no, you didn't complete it, and no, you didn't finish it, but I can do some of it, and I can do some of it that you did not do for me, or you want me to specifically do to show you I can or will do it for you. We are so c confused and mixed up. Our churches, our religions, the people behind the pulpit and the authority of holding all the congregations in the palms of their hand, that they're hanging up on the words and they need to be hearing the truth instead of the lies. They need to get an updated message of God's grace for Gentiles and not be given and imposed laws of Moses up on them that has been out of date. Out of date means, friend, it's been, it's gone. It's out of its dispensation. The times that it was, was perfect. But now time has went on and the covenant and the dispensation has changed. To what? That now, by grace, are you saved through faith. Faith in what? The work of the cross. Hallelujah. You have to accept the work that Jesus did in its completeness, in its entirety, in its fullness. Believe that Jesus nailed every law to the cross. He nailed every commandment, not just some. Our faith has to be complete. It has to be established firmly on the work of the cross in its entirety. He didn't just fulfill some and say it was fulfilled and complete. He did it in a completeness and finishing that it has not got to be duplicated or done over and over again. Jesus done it once, and it was finished. And now, he all, all he expects you to do is believe on him. The work that he did can never be superseded by any church. I don't care how many members is in it. I don't care how much money they have. I don't care how much power they have in our societies as far as being on TVs and radios and ministries that fly uh, their pastors and teachers around the world and go from continent to continent. Listen, if they're not preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified, the end of the law, they're telling lies. Amen. They are putting figments of imagination into your heart as well. They're looking into the things that they see puffed up in their flesh, you see, but not the things of God. God's gospel for Paul and us Gentiles is a simple thing. It requires no sacrifices of animals. It requires nothing as far as works and deeds that can be traced back to the law. It requires nothing that you are obligated in the flesh to do. You are simply required to believe. Believe on the only begotten Son. 
the work he did, if it's not good enough, then friend, we're all going to go to hell. Jesus had one plan. He come and made one new covenant. And that new covenant superseded the old covenant. You know, we started out in this country with a constitution. That constitution was thought over, prayed over, talked over, argued over, and finally arrived to the conclusion that our constitution would be the manner of life of all citizens that believed uh, in it and lived in America. It was almost imposed upon every person. The constitution was imposed on us. Uh, I hear so many times, love it or leave it. But that constitution, in order to please and in order to accept a lot of controversial stuff that has been since it was wrote, it, they're called amendments. They amend it. They amend it and change it. And they don't r erase it out of the old constitution. They simply add to for the dispensation of the people now that are under it. We have we have so many problems today over our Constitution and the things that has went on in our country that when it was young and developing and maturing and coming to a place of authority and a world power. Yeah, but those things do not exist today. Those things have been outlived. They've been changed. We now have a district, different types of systems and powerful things that are in place for the Constitution protecting all people. Uh, and that is what Jesus did. He finished, fulfilled, completed the first covenant, the law for Israel. Jesus himself being born of a woman made under the law, Galatians 4, to finish it and complete it, to say to the Jews, now you're not under the law. He done it to relieve them of the burdens of the law, of the judgment, the finger pointing, the condemnation of the law. He done it in order to establish a new covenant. And that new covenant would be Christ in you, the hope of glory, God, the Holy Ghost, a portion living in you, in your conscience and in your mind. No doctor can find it. No x-ray is going to put it up on the screen and say, there it is. There's nobody going to operate and change it. There's no drug altering uh, things that comes to the conscience and the soul. Listen, Jesus done something. When he, like Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 says, he put his spirit within us. It's now Christ in us. The hope of glory. It was God's hope, God's intention, God's purpose that he would strengthen us that he would make us strong and give us an, a power and an ability to overcome evil and things that weren't right, that we would have a strong choice and a decision to make, and that through the Spirit of God, Christ in us, our conscience now aware of and observing and uh, knowing the things that are right and wrong and good from evil. That's what this whole warfare is about, friend. Now, we're under a new covenant where He walks in us and He talks through us. And now that we have this relationship with God, Christ in us, it makes us a member of the true church there's only one church that's going anywhere. And it's not going to be on any carnal uh, achievements or carnal 
situations that are imposed on us that we're good at. No, we're going to make this place of maturity and perfection by simply believing on the sacrifice of Jesus. Hallelujah. The law made them do them sacrifices, and when they killed a Passover lamb, their hope was in that this lamb would secure them for another year until they had to do it again on the Passover. And God let it do it. But you see, now Christ has become the Passover, and He is so much greater and so much better. And our covenant now is Christ in us, and our promises are that we are going to have an eternal, never-ending life with Jesus the Christ for our reward. Thank you, Jesus. It's simple. We have to believe on the work of the cross, complete, finished, nothing else added to it. We can't do nothing to help it out. Grace is sufficient. Christ made it that complete. Amen. So, I want you to understand what grace is, friend. Grace is the only way salvation is going to come. Not through your religion. Well, I see time has come and gone again. I hope you get something out of this message. I hope it makes an impression in your heart and your mind. And I hope you get hungry for the truth. The truth is the only thing that can set you free from this religious system. Uh, my name is Bobby Carmen. I live at Hardinsburg, Kentucky. My phone number over there is 270-756-6784. My address is P.O. Box 743, Hardinsburg, Kentucky, 40143. If you'd like to send me a love offering, I'd appreciate it. Uh, we just have a few people that uh, back and support this ministry, but I pray for them, everyone, uh, that they will continue to be blessed enough that they can bless this ministry. Uh, if you like, like a CD of today's message or any other one in the last five or six years, if you just like some, I'll randomly pick you out some. Uh, you can go to the Facebook, type in Paula McKenzie, her name, these videos will come up, what we have taped, and uh, you can see us live in the studio at the radio station, and you can uh, view these also on the YouTube, type in my name, Bobby Carmen, they will come up, same videos, uh, but however you want to see or listen to these radio broadcasts, just let me know. Till next week, God bless you is my prayer.